Yo, and welcome to the 62nd episode of Lake of Rage, a Pokemon trading card game podcast. I'm your host, as always, Kevin Clementi, aka Mellow underscore Magikarp. I'm joined today by two very special temporary guest hosts. Joining us once again, we have Grant, aka Boo CK. Yo, what's up? And joining us for the first time in a couple of weeks, we have Locke, aka Dull Locke. What's up, Mellow? So I got a very special episode for y'all today. We have Milwaukee Regionals coming up. I am not going to be playing, so I am full leaks. I am happy to share each and everything and my thoughts on the meta and etc. Both of these two are going as well. So it is a great chance to hear what are some other players considering. As a quick preface, Locke has been playing for five years now. Quite a few yep. regional experiences. And Grant has been tearing it up this season, something that... You may not realize, considering he says some of the worst takes in the world on this podcast, but he has a day two in Indy as well as a top 64 in Vancouver. So when you talk about top players, you're talking about the Lake of Rage podcast, of course. That's right. So we'll talk about what decks we're expecting to see, what decks are going to see the most play, what techs we'd be bringing, and then we'll get him some questions from Twitch chat. As always, we're recording live on twitch.tv slash mellow underscore magic. But before we do that, lock. You had something that you wanted to uh, rant about. We can't call it a grant rant because of, you know, copyright. I don't get sued by my lawyer. <laughs> I'm filling in, but uh, <laughs> so. All right. Pokemon has like five separate Twitch channels for all, like every single game. And they put the VGC regionals on the main Pokemon channel. But the TCG for all five regionals is getting put on the side channel. and like. Like, Milwaukee would have been the one time in, like, forever that it makes sense to put, like, a brand new set on the main channel to promote the new cards. Because no one's actually going to go buy Sword of Shield anymore when Scarlet Violet comes out in, like, November. So, you know, we just, this is, like, the one opportunity where we get, like, five times the viewership on TCG compared to, like, just giving VGC all the credit, like, every single time, just because, like, some random person just opened twitch.tv.com or whatever, and then they just get auto-played into Pokemon, so. I think there's also, like, there were times where the TCG was on the TCG stream, but VGC was already done. I think that's the one that yep. it's really hard to ever disagree with, because VGC is way better as a spectator sport, but, like, when you're not using the main channel, it would be really great if they would use it for the tcg like it seems like something that was like oh they have to do a little bit of you don't have to do a lot you take the stream down for you know a minute in between rounds and then you just put it up on the right one you raid into the other channel like it's not yep. it's something that is super doable and it's something that i'm not sure if they've ever thought of of just like the difference between pokemon twitch.tv slash pokemon and twitch.tv slash pokemon whatever I think they could easily do the TCG on the main channel because if if the arguments people watch the VGC more, then you put it on the VGC channel and it'll still get numbers. But like like we're saying, people just log yeah. in and and see the official channel as a starting point. And if you know a regional's going on and they want to watch something else, they can go find it. But you know, give give the TCG a shot, maybe. Yeah, like and like next year. It makes sense just to never put TCG on the main channel with a brand new generation of games coming out, yeah. and you know, so but like, yeah, but at this point, Sword and Shield's so old that like that category is not dead, obviously, because it's Pokemon, it'll never be dead, but that category is just not mm -hmm. massive versus the Scarlet Violet category is going to be huge for I don't know how long it lasts. I'm not a VGC player or I'm not a video game person at all, but like, it definitely lasts a while. There was a while where everyone was in Sword and Shield even if they were doing ROM hacks or anything like that, because that was the category to be in for Pokemon fans to find you. End of the thoughts. Yep, so that's my rant. <laughs> I'll allow it. Yeah, un <laughs> unfortunately, talking to multiple TCG people, it's kind of like, yeah, I agree completely. It, it would be nice. I do know that Pokemon is planning some things down the road to hopefully increase some of the viewership of TCG stuff. But with that said, and there's a lot that could be done, and I hope that they kind of keep rolling with it because the card game sells a lot, and the conversion rate to playing the games is not as high as it could be. 
and that would be great. They did step in the right direction. They reopened leagues. That's that's nice. Hopefully that continues. Yep. Have any of you gone to any of your local leagues? Yeah, for a little uh, bit. Not 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 since they announced it. But. Oh, okay. That's what I was gonna ask. Like, are they still giving out promos and stuff like that, or is that not come back yet? That was the reason know, to go to league. I'm guessing they're playing <laughs> playing right now, actually. <laughs> well, thank you for choosing us over them. Yeah. I, I can't go do boots on the ground. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the Milwaukee meta discussion. So at the time of recording, Milwaukee is five days away. I hope I didn't make that up. And it will be the first tournament outside of Australia in the Astral Radiance format, and I guess outside of online as well. Now, that is relevant because you've all seen the results, but if you haven't, if this is new breaking news to you, I'm, where have you been? Follow my Twitter to get all the updates. But Australia had eight Palkia decks in top eight. Two different variants, five of which, if I'm remembering correctly, had Inteleon, three of which were Mew and Crobat and Trekking Shoes and Greninja and, you know, not Inteleon, essentially. So Palkia was the far and away number one deck in Australia. And there's some conclusions that you can draw from that. One of the biggest ones is Australia has two testing groups that contain some of the best players in the world. Seemingly two. I could be off on that one. So it's not surprising when those two testing groups all choose to play the same deck that the deck does well. But uh, are there any thoughts that either of you have immediately about those Australia results and how that's going to impact the Milwaukee regional meta? Well, I think the main thing is that a new, you know, archetype or deck style, the turbo has been sort of, you know, figured out or in introduced to the mainstream. And, and I know a lot of tweets and videos this week have been like, how do you put that engine with new Pokemon? Um, but it also adds to like Palkia being, you know, probably the highest played deck online, at least. And it's going to be highly played in Milwaukee. We can talk about that later, but um a new wrinkle into how to, to metagame against it you know like if if you're planning on playing jolteon well now that doesn't work half the time lock what about you um so like the very first regional of a format most people just play like deck that hits very very hard and that's pretty much palkia right now so you know I, it's definitely going to be probably the most played and this was like before Australia came out. So, yeah, Cash put out a tweet that I really liked, likening the Turbo Palkia list to the uh, abilities art that just like fast, aggressive version that we had uh, the year that Henry Brand won World. But that deck kind of came out of nowhere. You know, Tord got top four with it and it just kind of continued on. And the big benefit of that, like you said, is that deck won multiple ICs. Or sorry, it won one IC and then it got second at another IC. Both of the times, it wasn't actually the best deck in the format. And Palkia might be the best. Pal Turbo Palkia might just be the best deck, but it didn't matter because the deck was so fast and so aggressive and so streamlined. You know, it's four of this, four of this, four of this, that it just ran over so much stuff. So I think people are going to play that Turbo Palkia list. I am a big fan, unfortunately. I'm not a huge fan of Turbo List, but like you said, at the start of a tournament, Turbo is going to win a lot of games just by being faster than everyone else. Yeah, I mean, that's how Mew wins, right? Oh, yeah. If Mew goes past turn five, you're usually in a pretty good spot. Like every yeah. deck in the format's like, okay, I survived turn one. I've survived turn two. All right, I'm good, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you can make it that far. Yeah, I don't think it'll change how many people play Palkia. I think whoever bought Palkias in time to get them is playing it, and I don't think they're switching off of it, because <laughs> it was a heavy investment. Um, I'd like to point out one thing, too, actually, as you mentioned that, it's a 2-2 Palkia line. That's fair, it's yeah. It's technically yeah. affordable, compared to the 4-3 lines, right? Yeah. yeah. Granted, you have to find them, and that might be the issue, too. I know if I go to my LGS, shout out to Tabletop Village, located in Seattle, Washington, uh, you cannot find any Palkias. They were purchased literally on day one. Like, as soon as those things were pulled out of the packs, some of the people helping sort cards purchased them. And so, the question is, can you find them? And are you willing to pay for them? Like I said, a 2-2 line's probably fine. If you're willing to go to Milwaukee, you're willing to pay for, what, 90 or or $100 for those cards? Versus the 4 or 3, where suddenly that's becoming a little bit more. Maybe that's a bit of an issue. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't order them, I ordered cards May 
June 30th through June 1st, and I'm still getting things I ordered way back then. So you might you might not get them. It might be too late. So people that have them, have them. I doubt they switch off of it. Um, I mean, you could, especially if you're going to NAIC, you can adjust and play them at least once in two weeks. So we'll see. Yeah, there's always the discussion of like, how does Milwaukee influence NAIC and whatnot? And we'll get to that stuff too, but, or not this week, I guess. We'll get to that stuff next week pre NAIC. But I think that could be just the supply chain, I guess, of getting cards could be an actual hindrance. I'm not sure if you're going to the event and you're going to the venue, are you willing to risk that the vendors will have Palkia? Or are you going to say, I don't own them yet. No one can get them for me. I'm going to 100% play something else. Yeah, there's no chance you're going to get them at the vendors <laughs> unless you're the, the first person in. And if, even if they have enough. Like the last two events, uh, the vendors haven't really had a time. I didn't go right away at um, Vancouver, but I remember at Indy. Uh, I guess you had full grip there bringing cards, but the just the stock stuff there wasn't very robust i mean there was a lot of cards obviously but for standard playable stuff there wasn't a ton yeah vendors do not bring they bring a lot right but they don't bring like a ton of stuff because there's a lot more money in the collectibles yeah. and obviously they'll bring yeah. whatever palkias they have and whatnot but like <laughs> the old school cards are going to make way more money being able to sell that old wizard of the coast gyarados for 150 dollars is going to be more than selling that Oranguru from Sword and Shield base for a dollar. <laughs> yep. yep. All right, so do we think Palkia is the deck to beat? Do you expect it to be the most played deck? Let's combine both variants together for that. Do you expect Palkia to be the most played deck at Milwaukee Regionals, or are you more prepared for something like a Mew or Arceus variants or anything like that? I would uh, definitely, yeah. definitely Palkia by far. <laughs> I'm, I won't go that far. I think I think because you still have a ton of people. Like I said, if you're not if you don't have the Palkias, you're not buying them and playing them. Most people by now, for sure, have Mew, and probably have Arceus line. So you're gonna see a fair split of you know what the Arceus partner is. I don't know. That'll be the top one. Is it just straight Arceus? Either way, you're gonna see probably even distribution at least between Palki and Mew. I'm leaning towards that one. I would assume they'd be the most played deck. So I always do a YouTube video where I say I'd expect to play against this much in day one, this much of this in day one, etc. So spoiler for that one, you should go check out the video to hear more. But I'd expect about two Mews and about two Palkias in nine rounds of day one. I think they're close to even. And I think the Mew thing, if you look at online tournaments, you're like, oh, Mew's kind of falling off and Palkia's kind of taking over. You know, it's a little different when the money's on the line. <laughs> We see that every single regional <laughs> where it's like, oh, Mew's starting to fall off in online tournaments. Like, yeah, but $5,000 for first place. Yeah, and, and online people are going to try and mix it up a little bit. You know, not a lot of people just play one deck in online tournaments. You know, if you, you it's easier to get cards, obviously, and uh, you want to try out the new stuff. Yeah, I think just to go off of it, like Cal Connor's a great example just because he's a local. So I'm always looking at what he's doing. He plays a different deck every single tournament. Like, he's just like, I'm just using this yeah. to test. And, you know, he is someone who does very well. He is top 16 Vancouver, top 32, top 32 Vancouver, top 16 to Salt Lake City, you know, all that other stuff. And he's just, I'm just going to go play whatever I want to. Juan with Reggie Gigas. And I know that because I net decked him for the uh, stream <laughs> today. <laughs> and it's just like, do I expect him to play Reggie Gigas in Milwaukee? Probably not. But like, Online tournaments, just, I'm going to play whatever deck and see how it feels and go with it because it is incredibly low stakes. I don't have to drive to my local game store for League. I, in theory, I'm going to hit some good players and they will let me know very quickly if this deck is good or not, right? Yep. So we're expecting Mew and Palkia lock your team Palkia more than Mew, like a noticeable amount. Yeah, I, I, I would say three Palkias day one and two Mews. Oh, wow. So you're expecting like Palkia to be like that Arceus level. In those like yeah. indie ranges of like, okay, Arceus is everywhere. Palki is going to be that everywhere. Do we know the registration for Milwaukee? The numbers? I don't. Uh, I can look. It's still open, so. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, I ain't go. It's too expensive, but <laughs> that's good to know. Uh, okay. 
So what about Arceus? Is Arceus just no longer a deck to be super afraid of? Is Arceus going to be in the same tier as Lissy and Reggie and Ice Rider and all that other stuff? Or is Arceus still a step above them, just behind Mew and Palkia? Locke, what do you think about Arceus? Uh, I think everybody knows it's like the third best deck. So, Do you agree, Grant? Um, I don't know if I'd go as far as say best, like third best, but it's, um, I'm going to respect it. I think if I'm building a deck, I'm trying to beat the top two, uh, Palkia and Mew, um, or at least have good matchups and then rolling the dice more with Arceus, but I'm still expecting to play a lot of it, a diverse amount of it too. I am still team Arceus. And I know this is a hot take, and I know people listened to the pod a couple weeks ago where Grant and Alex were just completely hating (laughs) on Palkia, and I wasn't entirely disagreeing with them. I still think Arceus, I still like Arceus more than Palkia. Let me reword that. I don't think it's better necessarily, but I think the flexibility is something that you just have to stop sleeping on. (laughs) Like, Palkia is Palkia. The Australians innovated the list a ton. I'm not sure how much more innovation come out of Palkia. I would love to be wrong. That would be super cool. But like even the world champ played the most vanilla Palkia list. <laughs> and so if it becomes that vanilla, I think it's going to start to get countered, not out of the meta. It's too good for that. But it'll start to get countered somehow, some way. And I think Arceus is one of those decks that can do the countering. Yep, absolutely. Let's go down to the tier two-ish decks. What are some of the others that you're expecting to hit? So Reggie's, Blissey, and Ice Rider are the ones that I threw out there. Are there any other decks or anything further on Reggie's, Blissey, or Miltank that you want to throw out there? Well, I think we're going to see a lot of Reggie's as well. A lot. I think that's going uh, yeah. to be super popular. Uh, it's a you know budget deck, and it's good. Is budget a big like? Do you actually consider budget to be a big deal when someone's going to a regional? Like, there's a certain line where you're like, this deck is like four hundred dollars versus oh, I want to play the deck that's twenty dollars when the entry fee was already sixty. Yeah, I mean, at Vancouver, which was a smaller event, I posted the number for Milwaukee in chat. It's eight eight hundred seventy three. I think oh, you'll see that's more re- regional stuff and people that you know affording to go to a regional can still be expensive. So. A budget deck does matter. Like in in Vancouver, I played against an Ente like Firebox thing, which was a you know pretty budget deck, and then I played a fully blinged out Charizard V Max, which was <laughs> my only loss. <laughs> but uh, you know, so you know, you could see a whole variety of of people and their means. Um, so yeah, I think it is a factor for sure. Can we, yeah, can so, we not um, gloss over the fact you lost to Charizard <laughs> with Gyarados? Okay, so it hits 330 with the choice belt. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, that's Gyarados' HP. <laughs> okay, lock, go for it. All right, so um, this was like back during like the giant heyday of like Pokemon Go and stuff. So like, I think Chris Shemansky did like analysis of like regionals of like how competitive people actually are and like. He did, he like during those like thousand people regionals, like eighty percent of re- people only went to one or two regionals. You know, they didn't actually like fly all across the country like like most of us here are doing it. So like so I do see like a lot of people do playing like budget just because oh well this is my one regional that I'm I'm in the Midwest. I'm just gonna go to it anyway. I just play Reggie's at my locals, but, you know, so I'll just play Reggie's at my uh, regional, so. Now that you bring that one up, I completely forgot that existed, but I do remember it was like, oh yeah, people are really not, they're just not traveling. You can be competitive and go to like one or two regionals, right? But like, on average, if you're not traveling very far, it's going to be slightly less competitive, or maybe someone even with a tier one deck is going to be maybe played a little bit differently, maybe not fully teched out for the new meta, you know, stuff like that. That is always something to consider with an 873 person regional. That is very large, but you're yeah. going to hit a lot of stuff, especially early in the format when gutsy pickaxe, baby Lucario is still on someone's mind or, <laughs> you know, and any other thing in the world that you can think of that people are going to hype up. 
Uh, yeah, and well, the other one too, budget esque deck would be uh, Blissey Mill Tank, which I think you won't see as much of, but it's definitely something to that you have to respect when you build a deck. Like I'm going to have an out to the Mill Tank. I don't know if I'll have an out to the Blissey at that point, but because uh, the deck space to put something that can hit it or canceling Cologne or something, you know, a bad idea like that. <laughs> but I think that's another budget deck that pretty easily affordable as well it's also one that like there is a vocal subset of players who want to play decks where i just say i win because haha i've got a funny control deck and you don't have an answer for it and so there's also people that i think are going to gravitate towards the blissey mill tank just for that reason right of like haha i've got three mill tanks and you can't do anything about it I mean, it's it's a popular deck in Japan and sees a lot of results. Um, so, you know, if, if people know how to play it and, you know, strategize around it beyond just having an automatic out to some decks, mm -hmm. um, it could be, you know, viable. We'll see one one or two on day two. Yeah, like, let's see, by itself is still a decent card. So, you know, yeah. like, even if it had no mill tanks, I'd expect, like, a quad blissey just showing up in day two anyway. But adding Miltex sausage. That'd be better for it. That was in the last late night, I think it was. Shintaro Ito, former world champion, right? So like someone who's a very good player played a quad blissey list. Like there was also, I think, one cow and like one Evelt Hall or something yeah. like that. But otherwise it was just straight blissey and he got top eight with it. And obviously he was arguably the best player in the tournament. But still, <laughs> you can't really outplay your opponent a ton with blissey blissey's a play where you outplay the meta not outplay an individual opponent and so that's definitely okay. like that's a deck that has potential rapid strike urshifu who's gone what are you afraid of regirock and i'm not sure what other fighting cards are really in the meta galarian decidui v might show up maybe for anyone who's like oh this has a shred attack for mill tank but that's not one that i can co-sign a lot even though people online keep throwing it into Arceus decks. It's it's definitely a card that exists, right? But I can't think of any other fighting types that show up in large enough numbers to know they exist. What about Ice Rider? Is Ice Rider with or without a uh, Palkia a real deck? Uh, prob probably not. Um you know given Given that people are already going to be teching, a lot of people will be teching for Palkia. You know, you, you, I don't know, like for Intellion. I was thinking Jolteon basically was my answer for any of these decks, but now seeing a new Palkia, I don't know. But, you know, uh, Reggie hits it, right? It's got steel. Um, it's kind of slow, so if you, don't, if you don't get two down, you lose to Mew. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not worried about it. It's definitely a deck that it feels like it should have a good Palkia matchup because it had a very good Arceus matchup, and I'm just not sure if that's true. Because like you said, you have to get two of them down in order to be able to do anything. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just not a huge Ice Rider fan, period. But it definitely seems like it's fallen out of favorability now that Palkia is getting faster. And you lose to fast decks when you're Ice Rider. Yeah. And you're playing Melanie for your turn. They're playing Boss for their turn. So, yep. I am a fan of, and I know when I posted this in the team Discord, Sack shot it down immediately. But like <laughs> the Turbo Palkia list with Ice Rider seems good in theory. Like you can hide behind your Diancy when you need to in those early games where you have to. You run cross switchers with the Melanie as well. And so you kind of go with that Dialga build where you're running those things. And it seems fine. You may say, how do you beat Mew? I haven't figured that part out yet, which is why <laughs> I have not played it on stream or anything like that, because the Mew matchup is currently uh, unwinnable. But otherwise, it seems like a potential deck, maybe. Yeah, the issue is that you're going to cross it twice if you, have, if you play four, so... Yeah, but you can also KO the active in most matchups. That's your move. Uh, well, not, not against Muto. That's why I can't beat Mew. 
That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> but against everything else, you're fine. Just KO in the active and cross switcher in like twice. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Uh, what are some other decks? Are there any other decks that are currently on your radar? Because I am currently going to go to Sunny's Weekly, which is the tournament going on, go to metagame, and I see all of the top decks currently are the things that we've already talked about. What about something like a Dialga? Is that a real deck? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't I mean, know. I think it, uh, it, it's solid, and it does play Crosswitcher, so you could get around Diancy, So, How about Jolteon V Max. No. Why not? Hard to know. It's lightning um, type, so you auto win Palkia, right? That's true. That's well, not true. Not no. Really. <laughs> not really. Not really, I guess. <laughs> well, you need ping, pings and a belt. Okay. Yeah, but then you can't. The only, other, the only other way you could do it is if you're. You'd have to go like, somehow even extra turbo y in Jolteon and. Play super effective glasses <laughs> into into Palkia, and then you get two K. You get like a two prize in an active and a bench thing, so that's already three prizes. Yeah, Jolteon V Max okay. is one that keeps popping up occasionally as people mentioning it. Or again, as I'm in Sunny's Weekly, it's doing very well, and I feel like it shouldn't be doing well. With that said, it is one of the few decks that can utilize rocks and path effectively. So that's cool. And, oh, and this got it. Yeah. And the healing. Oh, yeah. And boss cologne manaphy. Yeah. Broken. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm not so, I'm not Team Jolteon V Max. Alright, so this is gonna be like my Urshi leak, but if people are actually gonna play Turbo Engine plus X V Max or V Star, people aren't playing Manaphy now. And so the, if the top two decks are not playing Manaphy, Jolteon and Urshi do get a little bit better, so. That's fair. I am still a fan of Urshifu. You can still use Cheryl. You can still use Quick Shooting Yoga Loop. I don't know. It feels like the deck never really went anywhere. Obviously, extra Manaphy hurts it, but if I could beat Arceus's that had Dunsparce and Manaphy, I'm pretty sure we can find a way. I'm not smart enough to do it. I'm waiting for Tord and the rest of Limitless at NAIC to figure that one out. But I feel like Urshifu so, is just one of the best cards <laughs> ever printed. Yeah, yeah. So I know everybody's playing the like free retreat Zerora, mm -hmm. but I think I'm going to. I also would play the Rapid Strike Zerora V as well, and just do the same same play, like just right on onto it and play. Uh, Rapture Energy. You know what the best part about that card is? It doesn't even KO Palkia V. <laughs> uh, the well, you still effect. play the super yeah. effective Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate the idea. Because like you're already playing Raihan, you're already playing Rapid Strike Energy. So maybe there's a world. Maybe Sylveon is the play. Good. Ooh. No. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, other decks that we're considering before we get too far into ethereum decks that are clearly not good. Other decks that you are considering you might face in the Milwaukee Regional Championship. Well, we've and... seen a lot of Duraludon. And you know I love Duraludon, so... <laughs> you expect um, to play against it... a lot of Duraludon. I th well, at least one. Yeah, I'd, I'd expect to play against like two Arceuses and maybe one of them is Duraludon. I don't know. <laughs> but. Yeah. Duraludon's one of the ones that I think is super interesting until I was watching Omnipoke stream and he lost to two Regis. <laughs> <laughs> and Omnipoke is a very good player. So it's like, oh my gosh, you're just kind of... got pathed out of it, right? Yep. Because yeah, because Reggie's playing... At least double path and sometimes triple path now if they're going off the Japanese list. So, yeah, it's a it's very unfortunate because pre the path, oh, I felt like Dural. I still like Dural on moving forward. I still think it's a very good play, but I think it's going to see a, a bit less play now that Reggie's running so many paths. It's so unfortunate. I mean, there will be more than there was at 
Vancouver or Indy. I did hit I a Duralid on Vancouver. So did I. <laughs> so it's popular, clearly. <laughs> which, which makes it more popular than <laughs> the last two. But, uh, so, if I was going to play Duraldon, I probably would put the, Sid- the Sydney in, just so oh. you pop those, uh, those pass away. Uh, one more deck that I like a lot. It is that Liminal deck. And I think, unfortunately, Mill Tank exists, so Decidueye's worse. So the one I posted on YouTube is uh, falling out of favor in the meta. But you can still run it with the Raikou and the Zero Aura, and you no longer have to worry about Arceus as much. You don't have to worry so much about the Lorala Bird Keeper or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think that's the type of deck that someone could do very well with. We saw it win the Card Trooper 2K or 5K. I forget what it was. The big tournament this past weekend. We've seen it win online tournaments at Juan Senior Dooms last Friday, piloted by Caleb Rogerson. I'm a big fan. I think that deck is A, very fun, and B, something that more than zero people are going to show up with. Maybe it's not something to actually worry about or tech against, but it is something if I were going, I would look at some of those lists to know what an average list looks like. Because if you haven't seen an updated list, you're going to lose. There's a lot of new tools in that deck. I mean, this is going to be, this might be the most diverse meta. Uh, I mean, there's other decks we haven't got to, you know, Gengar, uh, the water box that you like. You know, there's a lot of good, good enough decks (laughs) to be brought and played, uh, whether they do well or not, it's up for debate, but, you know, they're out there and they exist. I love Waterbox. Got ninth place in Melbourne. And uh, I think it's very good. And by very good, I mean actively tier two. And that's like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I think this deck is so fun. I really want to play it. I would be strongly considering if I were going, but partially because I have fun playing it and I put way more time into it than anything else. It's not actually that strong, especially now that people like know it exists. That's the other big thing. Being able to drop a Starmie or a Crabominable out of nowhere before everyone kind of had an idea, really good. Now that it got ninth place, um, it might still surprise some people, but when they know it's in the deck, it becomes worse. I love yeah. it, though. I, I'm rooting for Waterbox to win the whole tournament. And yes, I, that I means I'm rooting too. against you. <laughs> you don't know I'm not playing it. That is true, uh, technically. Uh, yeah. It it was my favorite deck coming into the format from just following Japanese results. Uh, but I think it's kind of phased out, or at least initially, I thought it was going to be phased out with you know, a lot more Jolteon early on, and that'll probably get knocked down again because of the Turbo Palk. Um, and then also Mana Fee and, and other things like that, you know, just kind of halter progress at times. All right, I do have one hot take about the Liminal deck, though. It's broken? Right. Uh, that'd be the deck I would absolutely like save for like NAIC if I was going to both regional, both the regional and the internet. There was no, there'd be zero chance I would play at Wisconsin when I could just save it, see what the full NA meta is looking like, yeah. then make all the text the following week for NAIC. So. I kind of agree in the sense that the deck needs to be teched out to a known meta, but I also disagree from a, if I'm going to both tournaments, I'm not hurting my own chances of winning Milwaukee if I think it's the best deck. So it's not like, yeah, winning NAIC is cool, but like, it's not worth hurting my chance of like, well, if I can just win Milwaukee, then I'll just do that because that's still $5,000 and like so much clout, right? You're right, it gets better at NAIC because you know what people are playing, you see decks, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I don't think I would be hiding a deck if I could. That'd be the only deck I would hide. If, if like, every, every other deck is just kind of straightforward where, like, you're only going to change a couple cards uh, from week one to week two. But the little deck is I'd, I'd change, like, eight cards probably from week one to week two, so... That seems realistic, because there's like a lot of what am I teching against, what am I teching for, 
certain consistency cards even become different depending on the matchups. Like Cynthia's Ambition, if your opponent always takes a turn to knock out, great card. If decks somehow slow down, they won't. But if they somehow did, Research, suddenly, great card. All right, speaking of techs, let's go and get into techs that you would or would not be playing moving forward. Now, of course, it always depends on the deck. You're not going to play Path to Peak and Mew Mew list, even if it helps against certain matchups, right? But like, just as a general, we'll start with the most obvious, Mill Tank, and I guess by proxy, Altaria and uh, Decidueye. Are you packing techs for these two if you're going? And if you are, how heavily are you teching? Is it a one card tech? Is it a eight card tech? Are you changing your whole deck to accommodate the cow? Where are we going with this? Well, I already said that I am respecting it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll have something in there. I don't know what exactly it'll be yet. It depends on what I end up playing. But um, I mean, it'll be the Pokemon and, and energy if it's a different type. And. You know, I'm not putting Cancel and Cologne in there, although there is an argument to, to be made for it, but um, not. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin my deck to accommodate a possible matchup. Locke, what about you? Are you teching, and if so, how heavily would you recommend teching? Uh, very lightly teching, because uh, I'm pretty sure people will bring some cheesy decks to Wisconsin, so... Ah, uh, good one. And then, uh... <laughs> and I'm, then I'm just hoping, oh, well, like, I hope the top decks beat Miltank naturally, and then, you know, then you can just take it out for uh, two for any NC. So you're more thinking, okay, the field will tech against it, so I'm willing to take that risk, or potentially willing to take that risk. Mm hmm I'm definitely in a... Well, this isn't entirely true. I was gonna say I'm in booze camp with this one, uh, agreeing with Grant of like, I am not taking the L to it. But there is part of me that's like, my number one deck right now would be Crobat Flying Pikachu. I said that on the pod last time. I don't know if that's entirely changed because it feels good into specific matchups. But also, this tournament might be too diverse. And also, that deck loses to Miltank hard. And that's also a huge, like, uh oh. So there's a world where if I really like this deck, I'm going to say I hope everyone else techs against it. Otherwise, I am not taking an auto loss. I'm on either camp. I'm either beating the cow every time or I am having zero outs in my deck. Yeah. Uh, what about Scrapper or Jammer? Are there any decks that should be playing these? And if so, which one should they be? I like Scrapper in every deck. Every <laughs> deck. <laughs> uh more than jammer but uh also just because like i've had so many situations where i want to scrapper my own tool off and then put down a different one but that's just me lock what about you i don't know i've been i've been cutting scrapper pretty lately so i don't, I don't know besides like getting air balloon off uh like Celebration's Mew, I, I'm not really that worried about like my opposing choice belts and big charms and stuff. So yeah, I think we're reaching a point. Last format, there was like a really strong argument for a lot of decks and a lot of matchups because like Big Charm and Arceus is huge and stuff like that. Yeah. I think we're reaching a point where it's not a huge deal. Like it used to be, okay, I can throw Jammer in Palkia, right? And then Ice Rider, for example, can't go Choice Belt KO. Mew can't use their Choice Belts. And you have the stop of the balloon for the Celebrations Mew. And I think that's the only time I would want this, is if I'm playing Inteleon Palkia, I would want Jammer so that all the people playing Celebrations Mew can't get the free pivot and the free search after I go Roxanne Path. I yeah, that's fair. I think that's the only time I would want Scrapper. But I would really want Scrap or Jammer, sorry, in that situation. I'd also consider an Arceus for that reason. I think people are sleeping on Roxanne a lot. Speaking of techs, Roxanne, are you teching your deck in a way, or should people tech their deck in a way that plays around Roxanne? The most hyped up card of the set, that seems to be nowhere to be found. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably put like one or two Jubilife Villages in. 
Uh, <laughs> oh no. No, I mean my my answer to Marnie's always been uh Bibberol, so I'll probably just I'm I mean I'm I'm going to probably play Arceus Bibberol something. So I think I'm already pretty set unless they want to boss that up, knock it out and Roxanne and hope that I don't draw into something. But that late in the game when they use it, I usually have two down anyways, so all right, so you're naturally teching because your favorite consistency engine, yeah, is a tech. Yeah, I've been bib roll over in Teleon since since the start. Locke, what about you? Yeah, I'm kind of with Vu. Um, I think most decks have outs to it, so like even like the Celebrations Mew can get you out of get you a quick ball or whatever to get into Crobat, and then they just fill up your hand again. So. Like, the only, like, you might just play one Mew in your Intelligent, Intelligent Engine anyway, and then that can help break it, so. And then you just get Mew into level one to drizzle out uh, your supporter, and then, then you're good, so. Yeah, I'm a fan of the celebrations of Mew finding its way into decks like the Liminal deck, for example. It just seems like a good... Little inclusion, you play Scoop of Nets, you play an Air Balloon. I think that's as far as teching for it would go. I originally thought like 1-1 B-Barrel, but uh, not unless your deck's already playing B-Barrel. But if you're an Inteleon deck, I think I agree with you, Locke, on that one. Uh, I'm also not 100% sure if I would be teching for it, though. Granted, when your tech is also more consistent, like the Celebrations of you, you want it, right? Yep. But it seems like <laughs> yeah. everyone in the world is downplaying Roxanne. And downplaying it to the point where, like, oh, they're not trying to bait me. Everyone seems to think this card sucks. And people will learn very soon that the card's <laughs> absolutely nuts. But with that said, no. eh, if there's going to be a tournament where you're going to assume the masses are going to cut their rocks hands, Milwaukee feels like the tournament for that. Uh, other techs. Are there any other things should be running Crushing Hammers, Fan of Waves, or Avery? Should we be running Avery for the Reggies? Um, doesn't sound like a bad idea. Uh, I mean, I, I was watching you play a little bit. I think you're. I think it recovers pretty decently from it if you're only playing one. So, if you're gonna go Avery, probably two. Um, and the Clap Stadium, as well, might be a something to include as a tech. I mean, that's also helpful against um, Mew. So. And Palkia, for that matter. So, yeah, yeah there's, there's just nice. Yeah, it's it's a pretty you know versatile stadium that that fits in as a tech in more than one matchup. And if you can get it down early against the turbo lists, suddenly yeah. you know they have one less spot for their crowbat, or they have to go grab their pump kaboo in order to go get their crowbat. And you love to see that. You do though. Yeah. I also have to say, I was playing Reggie's on stream before this. Unfortunately, Reggie's is a very real deck. Like, very, very real. I was Avery'd three times by a Blissey deck that also had a Dunsparce, and we were still able to not just win, but win with, like, several turns to spare. <laughs> and they got the first knockout. Like, there's a lot that went right for them, and we were still able to chain attacks and chain everything every single turn. So Avery's definitely a card you need a couple of them, just like Grant said. One Avery's not going to win the matchup. Two, that's pretty good. Well-timed. You know, you're not just throwing them out there randomly. Yeah, that can come in pretty handy. Yeah, you wait to see a couple of rods go down, and then you can, you know, put one down and hope, hope it sticks more than, more than one turn. Oh, yeah. Lock uh, see, I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite way on Avery. Like, uh, I would... Unless I'm sniping with Jolteon or uh, Urshifu, I would not play Avery, and I would just play a Manaphy for the Reggie matchup instead. Just because just Reggie Lucky is just so good that uh, just blocking death, eighty extra damage is uh, how you can win most matchups if you have a big V Max or V Star deck. So. That's fair. That's fair. Avery's the type of card that you have to tech multiple for it to do anything. Collapse, on the other hand, there, there's debate. I'm not anti-collapse, but also 
Path Against Mew is just so good. And then let's go ahead and get some questions from Twitch chat because we have a couple that kind of. Right, I do. I, got, oh. I do got one. One tech. The leaks. Kind of liking. <sighs> I think I. I like echoing Horn in in this meta just because like everybody wants to fill up their bench right like so fast between Reggie, Mew, Palkias, like if you just clog their bench with some useless Pokemon. Like that, you know, I think I think that's even better than a collapse. <laughs> So, I'm not anti horn. That's not, that sounds okay, right? I'm writing that down. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go and get into some questions from Twitch chat because on the stadium discussion, N. Benson asked, What about Temple of Sinnoh? And my first thought when reading that is, Palkia players, did you know if you go Roxanne plus Temple of Sinnoh? You don't auto win, but you're in a very good spot. So I think Palki is definitely the deck for Temple, and specifically Roxanne plus Temple against Reggie's being super good. And obviously, it's just good against other stuff as well. Yeah, I think it's just deck dependent, right? Like, if you're only playing basics, then it's fine. But, other, uh, you know, if you're playing uh, double turbo and you're hoping to put it down later in the matchup, I, could, I wouldn't do it. So avoid it unless you're basically Palkia. And even then, I probably wouldn't play it because it doesn't help against the Palkia matchup <laughs> or Palkia yeah. Mirror. So true. The next question comes from Peter M. What's the build to look out for more? Turbo Palkia or Palkia Inteleon? So we originally said, all right, Palkia is going to be probably the most played deck or tied with Mew, but we didn't differentiate the two. So which of the two, just as a straight, bold statement, do you think is going to be either more prevalent or are you more afraid of for Milwaukee? Hmm. Well, turbo, easy. Yeah, I think it's got to be turbo, right? <laughs> I would agree with that. We've had time to plan for the regular version. Now seeing this, you know, you have to have a completely different mindset. And I assume with the turbo build, you don't, tie as often as an Italian version would tie would take. So just because your your turns aren't as long as an Italian engine. So I think that might actually draw even more people to the to the turbo build. So that is a big deal. Arcus and Teleon tied a lot. And obviously with Sharon's care, those games went like a turn yeah. or two longer. But that's still a big deal. Like every Arcus and Teleon mirror match I had, I had to one oh my opponent. Palkia, yeah. you obviously aren't going to 1-0 your opponent, but you have time to finish a third game. I legitimately don't know. I have not played that mere IRL ever. But uh, that is a strong consideration because Inteleon engines can be pretty slow and you're probably two-shotting each other, assuming you're both playing it correctly. And that becomes harder. Mm -hmm. MewVOP asks, do we think Turbo Palkia actually needs 10 energy and 4 buckets? Yeah, <laughs> part part of it's uh you know using the the V star right, so you need to cycle through as much energy as you can. I and it's a playable, <laughs> and the bucket's playable. Think the list isn't fully optimized yet. I don't know if you need that many or not. Probably not to know, but uh. I will say the list was made at 3 a.m. the night before, or the night of, the morning of. <laughs> so if you blindly go in and say this is the perfect 60, I think that's wrong. Is it energies? I don't know. But there's. I think 10 is the, the good number. You're also but team the, 10 with the four. Bucket, the bucket, yeah, the bucket it, it might be the questionable part. So I know I, I want at least two. But... Oh, yeah, because the Mew, right? You definitely want to be able yeah, to Mew yeah. for your energy. Yeah, yeah. Pokey Gamer just asks who, what, when, where, why, how Duraludon? Um, it hits hard and it's a big beefy boy. <laughs> Grant loves his big That's... beefy boys. <laughs> where? Milwaukee? <laughs> how? <laughs> Sleeving it up. Yeah, I think that got them all. 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, the fact that it keeps a small bench is super nice. The fact that it's healing is nice. The fact that it gets through mill tank is nice. It's technically consistent by the definition of it does things every game. I played it in Salt Lake City. It was consistent. The problem was I played a bunch of Mews that all had horn. And if I didn't have my rod, I was playing a rod too. But it was, uh, and a lot of the times you had to put down two Arceus and then you just auto lose at that point. So, but it's, it's a good deck and but yeah, it hits hard. Play four bosses. You're just, they put something down, you boss it up. That's how I lost to it with Gyarados in uh, Vancouver. It was just yeah, like, how do you yeah, the boss on 220 is just so powerful. And the fact that, you know, they go 2-3-1 and I have to go 2-3-3 three, three is, it, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's a pretty good deck. Oh. And, and the ability sometimes just auto wins you matchups too. Um, yeah. Reggie without path. Yeah. <laughs> Deccan Cover asks, how many decks will drop consistency to Tekken Lightning cards? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. RPS can't do it, so and uh, surfing Pikachu. Some of the yeah, Coco V Max. Mm-hmm. Bro, I love Coco V Max. <laughs> I mean, it's on my it's on my list right now of potential partners. Oh, it's got free retreat too, so you can start it. Oh, I love Coco V Max. But uh, yeah, I am expecting lightning techs are going to show up. Now, Palkia players, listen to this closely. You don't actually lose to the lightning techs. You know how Raikou Okos you? You Oko them in return. And that's two prizes for two prizes. So if you're just the faster, more consistent deck, you still beat the Raikus of the world. The Zero Auras, you know how they pull off a 25 card combo to get that KO? It's, it's like a what, a five card, four card combo? Zero Aura, Glasses, Raihan, Attach. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a pretty decent one, right? Cool. They can do that once. Maybe twice if their deck's built to do so. You know what beats that combo? Roxanne. I think there's going to be everywhere. I think Palkia players need to be prepared for it. And just like Mew players can beat the dark stuff, Palkia players can beat most of the lightning stuff. It's just a matter of, are you going to? Are you going to be prepared? Do you know how to do it? Do you know the game plan? All that stuff. Ozzy asks, we can go quick on this one. Will Urshi see more play? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's because some Europeans are coming, and it's a, it's not a NA deck, so who knows? I, we'll, I maybe one European. more than yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I expect the Europeans at Wisconsin to to bring it. So, towards been playing a Samurott on stream. It seems cool. I don't know if that's what they'd bring, obviously, but. It seems like there's something cooking that they've got an idea of with the Intellion engine and etc. Whether it's Urshi or not, I don't know. I think Urshi will see less play. Not less no than play. zero? No. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, sorry. Compared to uh, the previous format, it will see okay. less play. Sancho asks, so in a boss's order situation facing Reggie's, do you take the Reggie Gigas, the attacker Reggie, or the Drago Reggie? And this is one now after playing the deck quite a bit today, in addition to having beat it, I'm going to be honest, so I beat a lot with like Flying Pikachu or Ice Q or something stupid like that. But uh, you always want to check their discard pile or most importantly, check the way they're playing the game. If they make an awkward play to go get a specific Reggie, you can potentially be like, oh, that Reggie, the other one could be prized. And yeah. that's the one you want to go target. So either A, there's already one in the discard pile, you go target that one every single time, right? Or they make a play and you're like, that didn't look right. Well, maybe they weren't going to actually get that Reggie off of their research or off of their anything else because the other one was prized. So that's the one you want to go target. Yeah, like like their last quick ball for their fifth Pokemon, you can kind of tell if they get the Regirock, oh, they don't have a Regirock in their hand, they have to go find another Regirock. After you boss that one up, then yeah, that's kind of how I go about it. Yep. Yeah, so it's super situational, but also there is yeah. always a correct answer. Yeah. yeah. Do you find and it, it's, it? And it's matchup dependent and turn dependent. So. 
Yeah, you could if they have the draw uh Reggie, you know, and they if you Roxanne them and KO something. Well I guess that wouldn't be boss, but yeah, um, cross switcher Roxanne. Now we're talking. Cross yeah, cross switcher Roxanne. You you might want to do that so they you know can't draw out of it. I think something else people need to know with the deck, they all have three retreat and they all have three energies on them. So you can't be like, oh, these energies are going to be stuck. I'm going to go boss KO something on the bench. Because I feel like a lot of my opponents were making those plays on ladder, and I can't ask them because of the PTCGO ladder, but it's like, that's not really... I can just retreat and then accelerate to the thing that I just have in the active now. Like The energies will never get stuck unless they're really bad at the game, and it's a late game, and they're out of energy somehow. But the energies in Regigigas are not going to get stuck. That's never the reason to boss around an attacker. And the last question. Bags asks, do you like breakfast? Love it. Yeah. Definitely. Only only a fool wouldn't like breakfast. And breakfast foods, especially. Because you can eat breakfast any time of the day. I hate American <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they are terrible. Just go eat dessert or go lick some lard and you have an American breakfast. Oh boy. Grant, where can the people find you? Twitter at real boo CK, one word. Um, boots on the ground Thursday. So I'll be tweeting everything I see, uh, finding out what the meta looks like ahead of time, and uh, giving you the best updates. If you've seen my coverage from at least Salt Lake City, was a good one. Uh, Vancouver, Indy. You know, I get in there and I find out what's really going on. So Twitter's the best place. Locke, where can the people find you? Uh, my Twitter is the lock with an underscore and a zero in it, uh, but uh, I do have my own Discord server, and uh, it's it's been popping pretty lately. I have a brand new uh, inspirational channel that's a uh, kind of meme. So <laughs> San Sancho and H two are <laughs> da posting daily in. <laughs> And myself, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Mellow underscore Magikarp. Uh, always appreciate it. Anyone who leaves a review, sends it to a friend, leaves a thumbs up on the YouTubes, anything like that is amazing so that we can continue to grow and hopefully not get ghosted by our guests in the following weeks. <laughs> this has been another episode of the Lake of Rage podcast. We'll catch you all next week.